And we back. Uh, today we're about to start our rebuilding journeys of random NBA teams. And we're starting off with the Memphis Grizzlies, one of the surprising teams of the season. They're sitting at third in the conference at 33 and 17. I got to take them to the next level from a team that is just respected to a team that is holding up the Larry O'Brien. John Morant, NBA All-Star starter. Shout out to G12. I remember it now. Shout out to G12. My goal is to get him a championship. I'm not saying it's going to happen in year number one. I highly doubt it. But eventually, we will be raising that trophy in Memphis. Leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and let me know in the comment section which team we should rebuild next or any other rebuilding challenges you want to see. All right, so I found somebody that created a Start Today file. It's just one day behind, so I said they were 33 and 17, and they are because they just beat the Spurs. So let me go ahead and force our win because we're going to need every single one of those. Thank you very much. But let's take a look at the team, man. You know who's up top with John Morant, NBA All-Star starter. Amazing uh, that he's at this point. They need to upgrade bro picture because this is a rookie year. Obviously, it's is a lot longer now versus uh with well, then and i guess 2k really had the opportunity to scan a lot of players because of health and safety stuff but then we got jared jackson jr dylan brooks and you know what the roster looks like my goal is to elevate this team one level this season then hopefully the ultimate level next year again what a surprising teams of the nba season so what i when i look at that roster and we're using the start today so there are injuries and things like that um so you see desmond bain i think he's in health and safety protocol right now uh, it says Tyus Jones. What, what is Tyus Jones out with right now? Health and safety protocol, day-to-day -day isolation. So when I look at this team, their depth is one of their most important things. They got the superstar player up front, but even when he was out, they went on a crazy win streak. They always find a way to win. They had games with my guy John Conchar, who don't even have a scan in the game, had like 17 rebounds or 14 rebounds, something like that. They were able to do it by committee. But I am willing to trade some of that committee to, to increase the, the overall uh, top-level talent, if you will. I didn't even realize they got, like, tattoos on his forearm, but they don't got his face in the... I don't understand how they're doing that. So the next question is, who is the player or group of players that I want to add to the Memphis Grizzlies team to elevate them? Now, we do these type of videos where it starts today. It's not going to be hyper-realistic, but it's not going to be in a fantasy world either. I know with the assets that I have, I can go get a superstar player. But I think I have the assets to get Jimmy Butler, but I won't because the Miami Heat are the top team in the Eastern Conference right now. So again, I'm trying to keep it in relatively realistic stance. So I'm going to go around the league and I was looking, man, there are a couple people that immediately caught my eye. Number one was Bradley Beal. The Washington Wizards just lost by, well, they blew a 36 point lead a couple nights ago. Wizards fans was calling for him to get traded. The only problem is, I don't think we have, like, if I'm the Washington Wizards, I'm trading Bradley Beal for a bunch of draft picks and or, like, a super talented young player. We have draft picks, a lot of them, actually, but we don't have that star player or super young player to attach to. So, we'll try to talk to the Wizards about Bradley Beal. It seems a bit like something that might not happen. Number two on the list that I would love to see here, if we're talking about wings, is Brandon Ingram. But the Pelicans have said, oh, time and time again, hey, we try to get that play-in spot, baby. We're not trading Brandon Ingram. We're not trading JV. So I'll try it. But again, it might not be realistic because eventually Zion will be back next year. And I think that Brandon Ingram and Zion can work well together. So they're, they're probably not giving us Brandon Ingram without getting back Jaren or getting back uh, Ja. And we're not doing that. So Brandon Ingram is on that list as well. And if we're going to tier below, I think that Harrison Barnes can help this team. I understand he's only 79 overall. Um, but again, we're looking for wing type depth, guys that can defend on the perimeter, but also get play some four. And it won't be expensive to get him on the team. Honestly, we might be able to get him for the low low. And he's under contract for a couple years. Now he's 29 years old. He'll be hitting year 30. But his contract goes down as the time goes down. So I think that could be a guy that we settle with if we can't get Bradley Beal. And the question is, how much do you trust Steven Adams? He's been a bright spot for the team for sure. His defense has been infectious on this team. He sets hard screens. He's helped John Morant do some John Morant things. But how replaceable is he at the center position? He's under he's under contract for two more seasons. Those are the type of conversations we're going to have to have for these next couple years. Number one on the agenda, go talk to the Wizards about the real deal, Mr. Bradley Beal. Now, you ask asking, Kenny, what type of assets do you have? I'm willing to throw in Dylan Brooks. He's 26 years old. Is this the best version of Dylan Brooks that we're going to get? Maybe, possibly, at 26. How much better could he get? I don't know. According to 2K's two-and-a-half star value, he's making $12 million a year. The next player is the youngest player on the team. Now... They traded up because they like Zaire Williams so much. But this is my thought process. If I'm going to try to win a championship in the next two to three seasons, 
it might take Jair Williams more like four seasons, five seasons for him to hit the best version of himself. Even what is the best version of himself? What is his value in 2K? Okay, it's two-star value uh, uh, to the Washington Wizards, which is not great. I was hoping that it was a little bit more for a 20-year-old former lottery pick who's been starting on one of the best, better teams in the conference, but whatever. So we got him. Um, I mean, contract's not going to match up, so we need to throw in more money into this. So Kyle Anderson's on the last year of his deal. So if the Washington Wizards are just looking to, to free up some money this offseason, Kyle Anderson can help with that. But he's only one star value. All right. So yeah, this is going to be rough. And since they have so many players, they have to match the amount of players that they give us, which hurts our chances too. Um, I mean, I guess give me Aaron. Ho like this, this just does, doesn't work. I'm even willing to give up uh, Kenny for an all-star, DeAnthony Melton. He's two star value. Financially, this makes sense, but obviously they're not going to accept that. We have like a Lakers pick that's might be valuable. Are the Lakers going to turn up? I don't know. It's unprotected, I guess. A Jazz pick from this year. We got our own first round pick, which is not valuable because we're one of the best teams in the league. I think a Bradley Beal trade might be something that we can potentially do on a sign and trade in the offseason. We just don't have the assets to do it right now. So we're going to back off the Bradley Beal train. And let's go to, to plan number C. Because I'm not going to Brandon Ingram, but we're going to talk to the Kings about Harrison Barnes. Uh, 29 years old, two and a half star value. I mean, it's not that much of an upgrade overall-wise from Kyle Anderson. I mean, even the financially, this makes sense right now. I mean, are we willing to give up something else as far as players go? Do y'all want Jared, Jared Culver? Does he have any value across the league? You give us back Jemias Ramsey? Okay, contractually, that makes sense. And then we'll give you... This Jazz pick that's top five protected, and the Jazz are a really good team. So it doesn't have much value. This is a end of the first round pick. Okay, we got a deal. Harrison Barnes, welcome to the team. And he's going to be starting at the small four position. And we're going to have Desmond Bain come back from his injury. And same thing with Tyus Jones. And our lineup just looks a little bit more, has a little bit more depth now. I mean, Zaire Williams was starting for us, and now he's like the 10th man. You know, is this the, is this the way things go? So we're a better team. Are we a championship team this season? Probably not. But when you got G12 on the team, I got it's. I mean, it's possible, but I doubt it. We got this guaranteed win, uh huh, because we forced that one. And okay, so we gonna keep it moving. This offseason might be the biggest one in the video. Giannis won MVP. Scotty Barnes was Rookie of the Year. Drummond Six Man of the Year. Matisse Thybulle Defensive Player of the Year. Tyrese Mack. Yo, the 76ers just won almost every award. They're doing a KLT for a Q challenge out here. Uh, Monty Williams was coach of the year, and then Jacob Parks wins exec for the year. I don't really know who that is. All NBA teams. Oh, Nicole Jokic is injured with a left foot stress fracture. He is out for the play. Well, depending on his team without him is probably not going to advance in the second round. All right, cool. Uh, second, or all NBA second team is Shea in that thing. All right. Third team sees Russell Westbrook in that thing. All right. Um, no John Morant. Hmm. A little peculiar, if you ask me. So, ended up being the two seed. Um, I'm excited about how this could potentially go. Let's see what team we're going against. We're going against the Lake Show. Mm. Okay. LeBron and Anthony Davis are still the thing. Uh, Russell Westbrook is, st is still Russell Westbrook. We did a video a little while ago where Russell Westbrook hit a game-winning three on us, even though he was only an 82 overall. So I'm not even looking at him in simulation to say that's a bad thing. It should be interesting. Our star lineup looks cool. We still got, um, we still got Dylan Brooks off the bench. I mean, we got DeAnthony Melton off the bench. The team depth is solid. So if that's one, that's one thing we got over the Lakers for sure. They might have the better top end talent, but we got depth. Game one, the so Lakers win. Okay. Game two, the so Lakers win. Oh man, this is what I meant. Randomly, Russell Westbrook can give you a thirty point triple double and dominate your team. Game three. All right. We're a young team. Just our second uh, second uh, playoff experience as a as a collective. Getting swept is wild though. Um, man, they clamped us up every game in this playoff. We scored seventy six points in the elimination game. Did we we scored over hundred points one time in a four game series. All right, whatever. I'm not even. You know what? We're not even gonna talk about it. That that just gives us motivation. The Suns win the championship. A little rematch from last season, but this time the Suns get their revenge. This gives me as the front office the motivation. To go out there and make the moves because we tired of losing in the first round. Two years in a row. That's that's actually really wild that we just did that. Swept? I mean, losing is one thing. 
It has, a, it has LeBron and Anthony Davis on the team. Losing is one thing. It's the sweat part that's wild to me. All right, let's get it, man. Offseason should be interesting because everybody that we have, at least with value, is under contract. We got Dylan Brooks for one more year. Harrison Barnes for one more year. Steven Addis for one more year. I mean, everybody is set for Tyce Jones. You got to figure out if we're bringing him back. Everybody else is still here and can still be traded. If I'm not mistaken, we only gave up one of those first round picks. So we have a few. We have 17 and 28. 17 from the Lakers. We have the team that beat us pick. That's crazy. What do we do with 17? What do we do with 28? I don't know. I'm looking across the league trying to figure out, is there a player on a team that underperformed that we should be able to go after? You know what? Let's go look at the final standings. Because now from, from this point on, we in the KOT for a Q universe. We get to figure, we get to decide what realism is. You know what I'm saying? So let's see what teams underperformed. OKC doesn't have anything we want. Shea is not getting traded. Houston, I mean, they don't have any wings that we would want. We already took one of their wings. They only got DeJounte Murray. We don't really need that. Brandon Ingram is still a thing, but they were seven games under 500 without Zion. So I don't think they're trading Brandon Ingram now. Out East, the Orlando Magic don't have a player that we want. Detroit has Jeremy Grant, but he's at the four position. We got Jaron at the four. And maybe we move Jaron to the five eventually. Maybe that's the grand scheme for us to win a championship. Jaron at the five? I don't really know. The Pacers have some players. I mean, if Jaron not going to play the five, maybe Miles will. But 2K Miles is a lot worse than real life Miles. Um, Toronto Raptors, I just don't see a world where they're giving us OG. I would love to pick up OG. I just don't see it, though. I'm thinking about it. But I don't see it. Bradley Beal is a free agent. Um, and he's got a player option. So he could potentially take this and then we trade for him. I think Bradley Beal is a guy we got to go, try to go after again. This time with some more of our assets, right? He's going to be turning 30 soon. Maybe he regresses a little bit. And that means that he's got less value. So what do we do with these? I think we just go in and use these picks and then we can trade these picks during free agency if we need to. Okay, let's see who's there at 17. We see who's there at 28. We do have the 2022 draft class in here. And... I don't know much about these people. I've seen this name before, and apparently he is the best guy available. But I do see this Nikola Jovich guy who is a shooting guard. I got to Google that one. I'm not saying it's wrong, but a 16 shooting guard sounds like um, um, something I would have known. If you Google Nikola Jovich, and again, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, it's going to autocorrect you to Jokic. Did you mean Jokic? I didn't. But according to this. Standing at six foot ten and weighing 109 pounds, he plays both shooting guard and small forward. Do I need to dive into Nikola Jovic now? I'm gonna go with the guy that's rated the highest. I'm gonna go with this guy. Me and him have similar last names, not exactly, but similar last names. He probably is gonna get traded for Bradley Beal eventually. But hey, so Bradley Beal did not take his player option, which is not good for us. Our best case scenario, if we're gonna get Bradley Beal, is that he resigns Washington. Because if he signs to the Raptors. I see the Raptors signed up for a reason. We can't steal him away from him. So we got to hope that he goes back to Washington. He's got zero offers at the moment. We don't really have money. We got, I think we, got our, we have our mid-level exception. Frenzy consisted of bringing back Tyus and then signing Dwayne Detman. I'm guessing Dwayne Detman's overall is going to drop. And is it going to drop? It dropped by four. Okay, that was a lot more than I expected. <laughs> I thought he was going to be like a 75. If he is 75, he's still a solid backup center. But at a 73, that's kind of rough. Um, but look at uh, look at the progression we got. We got up five for Ja, up four for Jaron. Desmond Bain is in the 80 overall club as a three and D wing is his official name. I mean, even Dylan Brooks is still getting better. Moment of truth though. Do the Washington Wizards still have Bradley Beal? They do. Boom. Okay. So we're gonna frame this. If we do pull off this trade, we framing this as a sign and trade. Okay. Cool. We on the same page here. I'm I'm still giving you Dylan Brooks. Got to make up 22 million. I'm still giving you DeAnthony Melton, who's on a killer contract, by the way. Two years left, making $8 million a year, 24-year-old, great role player. Still got to make up $11 million. Oh, man. Um, kind of forgot that trading for Harrison Barnes kind of stranglehold some of that uh, that cap flexibility that we had. So we got we got to make some, some moves around the edges. Contracts don't make sense. So I'm going to try to find out if we can do a three-team or I haven't done a three-team or all of 2K22, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm looking for some team with some salary cap because in my mind, I might be able to dump Steven Adams some other place. It might cost us a first-round pick to get rid of his contract, but I feel like I got to toss him to, like, the magic. 
You know, he's on the last year of his deal. The Magic will probably take in that contract just to get a first round pick out of it. So that's a possibility right now. OKC. OKC is always looking to get extra picks. And I'm, oh, I was going to say Derek Favors. I forgot he's making 10 million. All right, so let's go talk to each of one of those teams. So it was Steven Adams Associated. It was Dylan Brooks. It was, um, it was, whew, Zaire Williams has to be, oh, he's three-star value now. So that's good. Zaire Williams has to be involved. And I think that might be enough. Like if I did this, contracts make sense for us. Okay, so they got to give us some, or give us some players. I'm throwing Steven Adams to a third team anyway. So you give us, you give us back uh, Keelan Martin. Oh, financially, this makes sense right here. Zaire Williams is not as valuable to them as he is in our heart. The rookie is also about two-star value too. So that's not too bad. Um, so the magic was one of the teams. I was like, Hey, would you take on this guy for an extra pick? They already got Chet Holmgren at their center position. So you want Chet Holmgren learning how to set a big body screen from Steven Adams. That sounds like a winning experience in my personal opinion. So we can do that. Oh, that even puts them over. Never mind. I forgot how much money. Oh no, it's this one. Even that that's worse too. I forgot how much money Steven Adams really was making is 17 million. So we need a team that's making, um, Less than that, of course. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. Financially, everything makes sense. Obviously, this is not a trade that any of these two teams do. Makes sense. Um, I have my own first round pick completely unprotected. I'll throw that to the Wizards. They're saying no. I have another first round pick completely unprotected. I'll throw that to the Wizards. They're saying no. I throw that to OKC. OKC wants to do this deal for a first round pick. The only problem is we don't have enough space as far as assets go to add an extra first round pick. So <laughs> I can do the Steven Adams trade separately. So it's not a big old three teamer. We'll do something like this. Go back to the Thunder. Uh, you give us back Cambridge Williams and uh, uh, Kenny Freer All-Star. Do something like this. We'll give you a second to take on one year of Steven Adams. Cool. All right. So that's part of our fictional three-team deal. We just needed more space. So let's go talk about Bradley Beal. We, we, we were giving them um, Dylan. We're giving them Zaire. And then we were giving them the rookie. So there you go. And you give us back your worst player. In this case, it's Keelan Martin. Okay. Trade exception needs to be added. Not the greatest thing because that, that again, limits us to the amount of picks that we can add. And that... Oh! Whoa! I was going to say that Warriors pick is not valuable, but apparently it is. Valuable enough for the big blockbuster to go down. Ja is now playing with Bradley Beal here in Memphis. Woo, what a deal. Now, we don't have a center. Did I just trade Harrison Barnes? No, okay. Harrison Barnes is here. Oh, my God. I just had a moment. My brain was like, no way I just accidentally traded Harrison. Okay, so this is what we're doing. Jaron is running the center. Jaren is running the senator. Sen <laughs> He's running for senator as well. The man is multi-talented. He can have multiple jobs. He's just, there's nothing he cannot do. Um, but no, he's going to run center. HB is moving over to the four. And then we're going to have Desmond Bain run the three. And then, so this is what our star lineup looks like. The bench consists of Tyus Jones. We still have Brandon Clark. We still have Xavier, Xavier Tillman, who in this game is a four. He'll probably play more five than four for us this season. And we still got Kenny Hustle, which is dope. Um, and I still think there's a possibility to grow even better at the trade deadline if, you know, we feel like we still one piece away. What happens to Xavier Tillman's overall? Okay, he stays the same if I make him a center. That's just for this to look all green and stuff up top with the minutes. I feel good, man. I feel good. I'm a little bit worried about Jaron's ability to stay out of foul trouble now that he's playing this new position. And in his first game, he had four fouls. No big deal. We're struggling to score, though. That's one thing I'm seeing. With the games that we sim through, we're struggling to score. Fellas, uh, let's let's get it together, please. There we go. Get a win against the Kings. That is, that's the way to kickstart the season. All right. That's the win that we needed to give in the right column. John Morant's not going to get the numbers that we know John Morant can get. He's a 90 overall average of 16 points. I know his shot tendency is high, too. So, it's just about getting... Do I make him the one option so he can put up good stats? Because the the team is going to be better if we have Bradley Beal as the two option rather than the one option. We lose another game. But in this one, Jaws again. Come on. Come on, John. Let's let's get it together. We two weeks into the season. Give me a good game. There's a double-double. I'm looking for a good 30-piece, Ja. You need to give me one of those. He's barely cracking 20. 
Why is he barely cracking? Oh my god. I'm so confused. Give us a 30 piece, Ja. Don't offer me no trades. Oh, somebody got injured. That's a sign that somebody just got injured. Please don't be Ja. It was Ja. It literally was Ja. What is your injury? He's out two to four weeks. Okay. N not ideal. Especially since Tyus already was injured, apparently. Not ideal. But two to four weeks is not that much of a time. Not that much time. Ah! Boys, you know what? Let's come back when Jaws healthy. Because there's no reason to, to overreact to some of the stuff that we're seeing right now. The defense looks like it's holding up. We haven't given up a lot of points this season. Stop offering me trade. Oh, this is like an approved trade. The defense is holding up. It's our offense is struggling to put up at least 100. Not Again, not ideal. But we'll come back in one or two weeks when Jaws help. We are approaching the, the trade deadline. And we are sitting at the 3C. Which is good considering how bad it all started. Um, so I'm glad that we're here. The next thing is try to figure out if we're a buying team. Brandon Clark is unhappy with his playtime and everything. I guess it's understandable. Are we trading you away to upgrade it potentially? Uh, you look like a young piece on the team, but you ain't really that young. You one of the older guys. You know what I'm saying? 26? What? New York Knicks are selling. Again, another team that don't really have that much for me to even go after. When I look around the league, there's not a lot of talent that we can even upgrade, even if it's like small around the edges. So... I think this is our team. Do I feel confident that we can win a championship? I think we can. We we need more from Desmond Bain. I was hoping that he was going to be like an 83 by this point, but he's not. Even his shooting splits are down. So, you know, can we win a championship 100%? Will we win a championship is a different question. I would love to increase something, you know? Like, even the teams that are selling... I got like Harrison Barnes' contract, you know what I'm saying? Trying to put Harrison Barnes' contract to get to get into some money so we can make a bigger splash. But it's just not a lot going on if you look at these, these teams lower on the tier list. Like you can, but the only thing that kind of makes sense a little bit is if we traded for Porzingis. Um, he's got a player option next year that he'll probably take. The only thing that you can say from their perspective is like, hey, we're trying to free up as much money as possible so we can go out there and get a big, a real big name free agent to play with Luca, but Porzingis is only an 80 overall at this point. So is it even an upgrade if we're trading Harrison Barnes with 79? Is Jeremy Grant that much better than Harrison Barnes in simulation that we think it'll matter? It's one overall deal, or like a overall two difference. I mean, we got like Julius Randle; he's having a good season. But do we do we honestly think that Julius Randle and John Moran on the same team would be great? Like, if I did Harrison Barnes, we need to make about $3 million. We got that. And, like, Brandon Clark is unhappy with his role anyway. Is this a trade that we do? So far this season. Only problem is, luckily, this is only... We already planned until we win a championship. So, like, this is a lot of money for Julius Randle, who's going to probably be, like, declining in a year or two. This season, he's averaging 20 and 10. Shooting sub 40% as a power forward. Sub 40%. Not great. We could potentially do a little song, song you know what I'm saying? Who is the least amount of money play, uh, paid player on your team? We got another Martin. Um, uh, this it's, it's, trade feels dumb. It feels more lateral than anything. But Brandon Clark is unhappy with his minutes. And Harrison Barr is a free agent at the end of the season. So even if we don't win a championship this year, we'll still have the core intact. I did it. I did it. No picks associated. No picks associated. Um, so now when we come to the playoffs, we're running a nine-man, maybe an eight-man rotation. Is Julius Randle going to make us a lot better? We're about to find out in the second half of the season. Get past that trade deadline. First game with Julius Randle is a loss. But then we back it up with a win on the back-to-back. -back. Okay. I mean, hey, we'll see. We'll see, ladies and gentlemen. Was that a good trade? Was it a bad trade? Can it go down in history as something um, that, that hurts? Potentially, yeah. Let's fill this roster. I need a backup power forward. Yes, that's what we need to do. And I should have probably traded a second-round pick for one. I just was not thinking. Because, I mean, I got so many centers. You trying to tell me somebody don't want the young dude in a second-round pick for a quality backup power forward? I kind of sold on that. But we can go to free agency. We won't have a lot of money to get a good power forward. But if he can play. Now, unfortunately, everybody wants big money. And a lot of these dudes won't be able to play. 
Carmelo is just sitting in there. Jesus. Okay. Um. Let's just sign Sam Decker. I, I guess. He's playing for the Atlanta Skyhawks. Cool. Um, but when you think about it, Cambridge Williams is more of a back of four than anything. It doesn't matter. Let's go. Giannis wins MVP. We ended up as a three seed. Giannis wins MVP. Paolo wins Rookie of the Year. Jordan Poole, Sixth Man of the Year. Tyree. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. I did this before in a video where I called Matisse Thibault Tyrese Maxey for some reason. And I think it's because Tyrese Maxey's initial is, is TM and Matisse is MT. And my brain doesn't understand the difference. Um, but hey, wing player win and defensive player did. Did that happen last year? Did Matisse win this last year? Am I bugging? Did Matisse win defensive player of the year last year? That would be crazy two years. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Wow. Um, and then Nicholas Claxton wins most improved. And then Logan Schmidt wins coach of the year. All right, again, we are the three seed. Here's the first team. Here is the second team. Here's the third team. No nods to us. Zach Levine plays for the Spurs. Okay, I guess. And they were a playoff team. We might see them in the conference finals potentially. All right, like I said, we are going to shorten our rotation for this playoff run. Kenny Hustle is actually injured right now, which is not great. Um, Expected to miss a month or two. That's four to six. See you in the finals, my boy. We gonna make it there without you. We gonna, we gonna try our best. Julius Randle's upset. Oh, he's injured. Never mind. He's not upset. He's injured. But he's playing through it, which is great. First round. We're going against the Phoenix Suns, bro. What the heck? It's the Western Conference. There's no such thing as an easy first round. But they got Torian Prince starting at the three now. So, like, I don't... I still fear three out of the five people in their rotation or in their starting lineup. We're better, though. We win a game... That's great. We're already better this year than last year. Devin Booker gave us the works. Game two, we win. All right, Ja. Yeah, Ja. It's the playoffs, baby. Yeah, it's the play. Now, he went from 17 to 19 in the playoffs. Now, his shooting splits ain't great. But uh, points is points. 3-0. Ja Morant, playoff performer. Just like that, we are out of the first round. Playoff performer, Ja Morant, Bradley Beal, Julius Randle, almost with a triple-double in my power forward position. That's great. Oh, the Warriors get eliminated by the seven seed Eclipse. Now, the Clippers, they have pretty much the same team, but they have a point guard, like a real point point guard. That's an interesting development there. All right, are we better? I think we are. They are the seven seed at the end of the day. Game one, we win. John Moran is a stud. Yep. John Moran, I mean, this was this was three of our guys. Julius Randle had an 11, 19, and 8. So far, I'm loving the trade that we did. 3-0. We lose the game. That's fine. I didn't think we were going to sweep the entire conference. There we go. We get out of there in five to go against the Spurs. I said we go, We might see them in the conference finals if we do. So their team is DeJounte, Zach Levine, who have a connection. Because I'm pretty sure they're both from the Seattle area. I could be mistaken. But I feel like they're both from Seattle. I see them supporting each other a lot on Instagram. Um, Keldon Johnson, Jabari Smith. So this was a high lottery team last year. They signed Zach Levine, and just like that, they're a playoff team with Jabari Smith. And they also got Willie Cauley Stein at the center. Jaron, go grub. That's Willie Trill. That's Willie Cauley Stein. Game one. Is it Jaron? He ended up with 18 rebounds, and three of them were offensive. Game two. Yup. Is it Jaron? It is. We got a Jaron game. It's Willie Cauley Stein. He can't guard you, Jaron. He can't guard you, Jaron. Oh, I guess like, oh, Jabari Smith, the rookie, can't guard you, Julius. And we got a big injury. Who is it? It's Xavier Tillman. Okay, that's not that bad. Because Kenridge Williams is back. Now, we don't have a... Uh, Kenridge... We're going back to a nine-man. We're going to give Dwayne Demons some minutes. Because I can't have Jaron getting all the center minutes. Now, the good thing is that Julius... Ran no, I'm changing it. Since we have this injury, Julius Randle cannot be strictly a power forward. He's got to be power forward center. He's got to be able to play some center minutes, especially since we got the injury. So, boom. There we go. So, we have some centers in the rotation. Sam, is Sam Decker about to get a free ring? Jesus Christ. Last game, potentially, and we get out of there with a sweep. And it was Jaron. Playoff Jaron is actually wild. In the finals, we're going against the Atlanta Hawks, two-seeded Atlanta Hawks. Ja versus Trey is a really good matchup. They got Marvin Bagley on the lineup. Other than that, everything else is the same. I feel good. We stop Trey Young. Oh, limit Trey Young. We win the series. Game one. We win. And I would consider this limiting. Yeah, he had 26, but he ain't go crazy, crazy. I consider that limiting, especially when you got DeAnthony Melton, Kenny for All-Star, shooting 6 for 12, 9 for 12 from the field and scoring 22 points off the bench. When Ja Moran had a stinker, we had some help. Game two. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Where's Trey Young? 
Trey Young get injured last game. Wait a minute. Box score of game one. He only played 25 minutes. Are you injured? He is. Mickey. Oh, twisted right knee. I hate to see that happen. They gonna say Mickey Mouse ring for us? Because Trey Young is injured? They gonna say Mickey Mouse ring for us? I mean, Bradley Beal with a 40 piece. I mean, they might say Mickey Mouse ring. I don't care. We brought one in Jaren is finals MVP. Oh, Trey Young came back. Look at that. He came back for game four. Was he there for game three? He was not there for game three. So we missed two out of the four games, but we still won. I mean, I love doing these rebuilds. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you are new, and I'll see y'all tomorrow. Peace.